CGTN, China Global Television Network. Africa is a continent with a rich cultural heritage. But since the 1800s, innumerable priceless artifacts have been looted from their home countries. Recently, though, there's been a growing push from Africa to reclaim its lost artifacts. In what could be a response to this drive, France's President Macron announced the appointment of two experts to work on feasible plans to repatriate African art currently held in French museums. This week on Talk Africa, we look at why artifacts should be returned and what is the best way of doing that. I am Liu Feifei. Welcome to Talk Africa. European museums today house some of the largest collections of African artifacts in the world. However, many of these pieces hold invaluable cultural and spiritual significance to their home countries. We talked to some members of the public to get their views on where they feel these artifacts should be displayed. Let's take a look. Our civilization's antiquities abroad must come back to Egypt as they will bring tourism with them. Because with more artifacts and archaeological collections, we will have more tourists that will be interested in coming to visit us. As an Egyptian, I believe we must try to bring back all those priceless antiquities that are abroad. These art pieces must not come back to Egypt. People abroad know how to take care of these fragile pieces. If we were keen to protect our ancient belongings, they wouldn't have been smuggled or sold out of the country. These thieves are stopped abroad and the items displayed in the best of places. So why must someone come and steal away our artifacts, which is the traditions of our people, of which, when it is found in any community or in any country, it needs to be returned. This artifact belongs to Nigeria in the first place. And uh, taking them abroad is like uh, they are robbing us. I'm now joined by our panel of experts to discuss how to recover Africa's lost artifacts. In Cairo, we have Bassam Al Shama, an Egyptian archaeologist and a vocal activist on art repatriation. From Brussels, we are joined by Bruno Verbecht, Deputy Director of the Royal Museum for Central Africa. And in Lagos, we have Jaman Anikulapo, an artist, cultural communicator, and advocate. Welcome, gentlemen. Countless pieces of African artifacts can be found in museums all over Europe. Uh, and elsewhere in the world. Now, they've been there uh, since the colonial period for the most part. Who, in your opinion, is the rightful owner of these artifacts today? Let us start with you, Bassam. I believe the ownership of these monuments all goes back to the original land, to the motherland. All monuments and historical heritage and archaeological sites, statues, tombs, pillars, golden artifacts and others belongs to the motherland. So if it is a statue from Luxor, Egypt, it belongs to Luxor, Egypt. If it came from the pyramids area, it belongs there. And there is no reason whatsoever and no logical explanation of all our African heritage in a big percent of it is now exhibited in museums or even sold in auction markets in front of our eyes without anybody doing anything about it. Yes, we are retrieving some of our monuments here in Egypt, but we are still for retrieving Nefertiti's head from Berlin, the Rosetta stone stela from the British Museum and others from the Louvre and from the Metropolitan Museum in New York and places like that. All monuments belong to the country that it came from. And there is not one good reason 
why it is still there in museums or in private collections. Bruno, to you, what are your thoughts? Is this a blanket categorical definition of uh, who has the ownership of these artifacts? No, I think, uh, honestly, it is much more complex. Uh, uh, the owners of uh, pieces that are in museums belong to humanity, I believe, uh, first and for all. And then you have to make a difference between the, the legal ownership and the moral ownership. And I understand uh, very well Mr. al Shama that he says that there is a kind of moral or ownership uh, by uh, people that are descendants uh, and that are still living, uh, in, for instance, in, uh, in Egypt. And there is a legal ownership uh, because not all of the works were stolen. Some of them were just uh, sold. And so there is a, a, a very complex legal ownership. Uh, in our case, we are a state museum. It belongs to the, to the Belgian state. But I do agree with him that uh, we have to talk maybe much better to whom belong, to whom do things belong, uh, which is uh, belonging is maybe something different than, uh, uh, than, than owning. Uh. And to our guest in Lagos, Jamal, what do you have to add to the arguments that have been put forth? Yeah, I, I support uh, my brother from Cairo. The works belong to the motherland, belong to the original owners. Uh, but that's at uh, the emotional and sentimental level. I, I mean, like Bruno said in uh, Belgium, we need to also look at legal rights and moral rights. Uh, I don't want to be blinded by sentiment that the work belongs to us. It belongs to us. It's our work. I mean, it's our antiquity, it's our ancestors, uh, ancestral works. Uh, these are part of our history, part of our heritage. But then, motherland too has to be ready to take those works. We have to be ready in terms of institution, in terms of policy, in terms of readiness, even uh, mental readiness to host this works because I know the situation in uh, in Nigeria, and I can't compare it to the situation in uh, in Cairo or in South Africa or in Kenya, but I know that originally the works belong to us. But then we have to be very careful when we discuss uh, whether the work should be returned or in what condition they should be returned. But recently, there's been a renewed effort. Uh, for example, Patrice Talon uh, from the Republic of Benin, the president there, he has been calling uh, for the return of the looted Dahomey treasures. Um, what, what are the similar demands that are being made in Egypt and Nigeria? Oh yes, I mean, there are lots of positive things that happen in our beautiful Africa dealing with retrieving our monuments. We all remember, for example, Ethiopia when they retrieved and regained their beautiful Axum obelisk. And that was a great victory when they retrieved it from Italy. Mussolini took the obelisk, cut it into three pieces, put it in Italy, and then Ethiopia retrieved it. Uh, we uh, all remember Libya retrieved also a monument from uh, Italy. Uh, we in Egypt retrieved um, lots of monuments from Cyprus and from other places and from there we can see that there are positive things happening to retrieve but we need more action from the UNESCO and from the ICOM of museums and the danger, the danger of naming the human collection. The danger of that statement is that it makes countries take other monuments from the other countries and put it in their museums because they are stronger, because they are richer, so they can put it in their private collections and they say this is human race property. It is not human race property. An Egyptian monument is an Egyptian right. historical heritage. Right. And we in Egypt, for example, are inviting the people to come and enjoy it. Indeed, and you also have the Rosetta Stone, which is still not been returned to Egypt. But to you, our guest in Nigeria, Jaman, has there been a renewed effort on the part of the leader in Nigeria, President Buhari, for a call to return these looted artifacts today? Okay, um, you know, I said in my initial uh, contribution that um, the African leaders themselves, who ought to be asking for these works, have to be serious. It goes beyond just going to make a political statement because it makes you to look good, uh, political correctness. Uh, the state, as I, I'm aware that the Nigerian government has not in particular made any particular case. And I'm, I'm quoting from the document I've seen from uh, ICOM and from AFRICOM. But 
Nigerian government, for instance, has not made any serious attempt to retrieve these works. But yes, there have been some uh, individual efforts, for instance, the Oba of Bini, uh, from whose kingdom uh, uh, in 1897 some, some of the works were looted. He has made an appeal. And, but he's thinking of bringing these works into uh, a museum to be built by the Bini kingdom, not by the Nigerian uh, system. The Nigerian Museum and uh, Commission for Museum and Monument, I am not aware that they've made any serious attempt in terms of an official document that was sent, even though we're signatory to the 1954, 1975, uh, 1970, and 1995 convention, which said that we can uh, legally demand for these works. But where are we going to keep them? And then where is the serious effort to actually retrieve those works? And I know from the situation here, that's why I said I cannot speak for the rest of Africa, from the situation here, I do not see that infrastructure. I do not see that policy. I do not see that preparedness, in, in, even in terms of capacity building, in terms of skill, that can take some of those work. But I, I appreciate the progress that has been made in Egypt, which my brother is speaking about. I think I've, I've read quite a lot about what is happening in, uh, in Egypt, and they've done quite a lot of work. Uh, last year, President of, uh, the President of France, President Emmanuel Macron, has said that returning African artifacts is going to be a top priority for his administration. Why do you gentlemen think that President Macron is stepping out ahead of this issue? Uh, let's start with you in Brussels, Bruno. Um, I think, in fact, uh, President Macron feels something which is alive in Europe and, uh, and where we all disagree, and I do also disagree uh, with two colleagues in, uh, in Africa, in Egypt and in Nigeria. President, uh, in fact, the discussion uh, within the museums and the specifically what we call ethnographical museums in Europe already is, uh, is uh, going on longer. I think I've seen in the last two years two or three PhD the um, uh, theses that have been written on the restitution. And, and so many inhabitants in Europe feel that there should be more equity in general. And, and, and when we talk, when we think human rights are very important, that equity should be important and that we should also do that for the, uh, for the museums. And I, I believe that President Macron was just the first one to, to grasp this, uh, this general feeling of what we call uh, decolonization and, and more equity in, in the world and in our relationships between, uh, between Africa and Europe. And, and um, many people in museums are also thinking about it and thinking really on, on how could we do this uh, uh, and what are the conditions under which uh, this can be done in mm. a positive way. Yes. But Sam, what, what do you think of this recent change in attitude um, as articulated by President Macron? I think what uh, President Macron in France decided um, as a step uh, to uh, send back uh, some of the African monuments, or all of them, I hope, is a gigantic, positive, very excellent uh, move made by an intellectual person who wants all the nations to regain their heritage. I will remind the world, and I will remind my two colleague gentlemen who are with me in this panel discussion, of what happened in the Museum of Northampton in Great Britain when the museum decided to sell an ancient Egyptian statue. A, a man, an honorable man in ancient Egypt, 4,000 and something years of age, an exquisite piece of art with the name of Sechem Ka, and it was sold for 14 and something million sterlings. Why? Why did the museum sell an Egyptian monument, an Egyptian exquisite artifact? Because they wanted to build an extension for the museum. Can you see any logic in this? A museum selling artifact to get money to make an extension? Bruna, I want to also give you an uh, opportunity to respond to what uh, Bassam had said earlier. Uh, certainly, I, I agree with Jaman. We have had the same experience in the 70s and the 80s when there was an agreement made with uh, uh, the former Zaire and uh, uh, President Mobutu. Uh, works were returned, and, uh, and a few years later, all of them were all over the world in international auctions. And that is, in fact, the reason why we say they should really belong to humanity and, and be kept to humanity. And, and, and these occasions have led to the fact that for 
for many years, people really were very reluctant uh, uh, to the restitution issue, and wrongly so, because I do not agree with Mr. Jaman. There are museums uh, also in Africa uh, that are uh, having or uh, are trying to get uh, to the good, uh, good uh, preservation co uh, conditions. I'm thinking of museums in Rwanda. I'm thinking of the new museum built in, uh, in Senegal and, of course, in, uh, in Cairo. Now, President Macron had went on to say, and this is a topic of some controversy, that he went on to say, in the next five years, I want the conditions to be met for the temporary or permanent restitution of African heritage to Africa. Now, some advocates in Africa felt that they found this to be quite offensive, if you will, because who are the French to set the conditions? Well, I, I see quite a lot of logic in it that uh, if I get your question right, uh, President Macron has said the work should return, but then he was going to set the condition. And I believe that uh, from my understanding of uh, the situation of things, reality, uh, that it is good to return the work, but then we do not have to go by emotion to just say, just return the work. Because as I've said in my other contribution, w to what are the works returning? Because we've had cases of, uh, and not just Nigeria, where works were returned, and eventually, some of these works were also found in auction markets abroad. So how did they get back there? Why is it that the works are coming back, and then before you know it, under one year, under two years, then the works return? I'm, I'm trying to be very realistic, because I've been at this campaign. And when I was a cultural editor, I made almost two decades of campaigning for this work to return. But the reality that I have seen, especially the kind of situation that prevails in Nigeria, I'm not saying Africa, please, I'm not saying Africa, in Nigeria, the kind of condition that I have seen, the kind of embarrassing story that we've had that works return and eventually they're also found outside. So if you're a private collector and you've returned work through uh, the initiative of President Macron and under some years, uh, after some years, you find the work again in Europe, how do you feel? Why will we, it means that we may not be able to sustain this particular campaign. I'm saying that, well, President Macron is right to say the work should return and to set the condition under which the work will return because I do not have trust in government. I'm sorry, I've never worked in government, so I do not have trust in the kind of system that's supposed to preserve some of this uh, uh, okay. work. And I ask myself Thank again, you. where are the facilities? Let's take a short break. We'll continue this conversation when we come back. Stay tuned. China Global Television Network, from broadcast centers in Beijing, Washington, and Nairobi. A unique global perspective. Six channels and a video content service. News when you want it and where you want it. On TV screens, websites, mobile platforms, and social media. CGTN. See the difference. Welcome back to Talk Africa. Now, before the break, we discussed why the momentum is building for the return of some of Africa's lost artifacts. Let's now discuss how this can be done with our panel of experts. In Cairo, we have Bassam al Shama, an Egyptian archaeologist and vocal activist on art repatriation. From Brussels, we are joined by Bruno Verbeck the Deputy Director of the Royal Museum for Central Africa. And in Lagos, we have Jaman Anikulapo, an artist, a cultural communicator, and an advocate. Jaman, let's start with you. Can you tell us what some of the legal complexities are in terms of repatriating Africa's lost art? Well, I, I know that, um, as I've mentioned, uh, I know that Nigeria is a signatory to a lot of convention, uh, that we, we are actually in that mode to to request for some of this work. But I'm not sure that those uh, documents have in any way been activated here. There are a lot of them that we know by, uh, even when I was working as a cultural editor, that we reviewed some of these documents. They, they, they speak well. But how far the, the, the system that runs the, the museum and heritage uh, materials uh, have been able to tap into those uh, 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 legal documents to be able to make a formal demand is what I'm not sure of. As I have said, I'm not aware that Nigeria has made any direct request. As uh, my brother in uh, Cairo was saying, that there have been some legal, uh, formal requests for some of those work. But we've not mm. even 
activated some of those conventions right. from what I understand right. and from right. my studies. I'm, I'm not sure that we've, we've done it. So if you have not activated them, right. uh, how do you then go into that? That's the complication that I see in all of this. But I support uh, what Bassam said that, um, like Macron, other kings and uh, head of state and uh, around the world should rise up to ensure that the writing is done so that we can have a fair, fair, fair game. Right, thank you. Bruno, let me go to you in Brussels. Let me pose this question. What are some of the legal complexities? For, for example, in Britain, in order for some of the arts to be repatriated, uh, legislation would have to be passed in Parliament. What are some other examples of legal complexities? No, that, that, would be the, that would be the same in Belgium. And in fact, that is also because the works are, the, the state-owned works are protected against selling them. Uh, um, the example that was given before the break was, of course, from private collections. But uh, a state-owned collection can be just uh, given away. So legislation needs to be uh, adapted. I think also that's why President Macron has installed a committee to find that out. And they are still working on it. I think they got five months or six months to work on it because of exactly of this, uh, this complexity nationally, internationally, with international bodies and so on. And in Cairo, are there legal complexities that you can think of that would make it a severe hurdle to jump through? I think the agreement among all the countries that wants to do this is the difficult part. Once we are through with convincing them that to agree to bring us back our monuments, I think every step afterwards will uh, be fast, will be easy. It is a great golden chance for the world, and especially the colonial world, to erase from their name that great shame of taking the monuments with them when they left the countries, especially in Africa and many of the Arabian countries, with culture. It's a great chance for them to say, we are sorry. And I will give you a good example for that of we are sorry. In the United States, there is an auction on internet from Texas, Houston, that is selling a human head of an Egyptian, of a person who lived on Egypt, on the Egyptian land, selling a head of a mummy. And it is bringing, I don't know, 40 and a half thousand US dollars. What world? are we living in and what kind of hypocrisy in many associations that are trying to tell us that we love fairness and legal stuff and you are selling a human head online on the point of financial uh, gains that the European museums continue to make. Bruno, I, I want to maybe get your perspectives on that. Are, are these museums continuing to make financial gains? And if they are, uh, on the other side, people are saying that in addition to returning the lost artifacts, uh, monetary restitution should also be made. What, what are your thoughts about that? Yeah, I think it's quite a myth to think that uh, lots of money is gained with uh, with these monuments, and there might be indeed some exceptions. And even though for the Louvre, etc., I can talk for the museum I work, we are still state subsidized, um, and uh, so we do ask uh, visitors uh, an entry fee, but it is really uh, only a part of our costs. And in fact, when we say we're not only saying we want to preserve it, uh, on the on the contrary, we want to have an open uh, dialogue about it, but. Many museums also have to say, we did so. We did for, the, for, for many, many years, even when conditions were not that bad. Uh, we did preserve them within the context of an ICOM and the museum and within the context of this is something of value for all of us. And it is in that spirit that we now should talk just like uh, uh, President Macron has said. Bassam, what do you think? Why the United States is not sending the Statue of Liberty to be exhibited in Cairo? If you are taking my monuments in the Metropolitan Museum in New York and you are putting it there and you are making people pay tickets to and you are benefiting from it, Berlin, Louvre, you name it, minus a number like the British Museum is for free and you are making loads of billions and billions of euros and dollars, why, are you, why am I not having the Eiffel Tower in Luxor? Why am I not having the most beautiful artifact uh, in elsewhere in Alexandria, Egypt? Why only 
my monuments of the big cultures in Africa and in Asia and everywhere, like Iraq, like Palestine, like Egypt, like Sudan, like Syria, like Yemen, why are all those beautiful artifacts of these countries are exhibited and sold? And at the same time, the other countries are saying, oh, we want to preserve your monuments. The calls for repatriation of these uh, lost artifacts, in fact, is not new. And it's also not unique to Africa. There are legitimate claims from Greece, uh, from China, from Latin American countries, Eastern European countries, uh, from Iran, Afghanistan, and so forth. But um, what is the next step forward? It, as a last question to each one of you gentlemen, if you could have a win-win solution, what would that look like for you? Well, I think uh, the monuments and the heritages all over the world, and thank you for mentioning countries uh, like Arabian countries and Iran and Greece. And how, how about the Elgin marbles? We all remember uh, when uh, the beautiful frieze sculpture of the Acropolis of the Parthenon uh, was taken by uh, Lord Elgin and it's in the British Museum. And I remember the uh, a cultural minister of Greece uh, made a great topic about it, and the whole world was talking about it. And what is this point of changing even the name of the monument? It's the frieze at the top of the temple in the Parthenon, uh, in the Acropolis, not Elgin. It is not to be named after the British person who I don't know took it or bought it or I don't know what did he do with it. Now it's in the British Museum. There is, there is, there is this Indeed. talk about what Thank is you. British in the British Museum. Thank you, Bassam. And to you, Bruno, uh, what are your thoughts on a win-win outcome? I think that um, b given the fact that uh, uh, legal issues are so complex, um, the, the best thing to start whenever there is a, a difference in opinion is to, is to dialogue. And I understand very well that maybe it was uh, seen as an insult to talk about permanent loans, etc. But it is uh, something maybe that can be done quickly uh, and without uh, much of a legal hassle that uh, maybe we can, yes, indeed try to do and we should try to do. But maybe it will also take many, many years and many discussions. Uh, and maybe it's not necessary if uh, already museums amongst themselves uh, are talking and are trying to, uh, uh, to establish uh, permanent uh, loans or, or other kind of uh, uh, loans or exchange uh, and so on. Thank you. Thank you, Bruno. Jaman, you have the last word. Well, um, talking of way forward, um, I'm sure uh, I agree with Bassam that there ought to be some agreement among uh, African uh, uh, leaders of thought or Afri African uh, head of state. But you know that even within Africa, there has been no agreement. I, I think there's, they, they need to come together and have an agreement that they want to demand for this artifact uh, antiquities to return. There has to be an agreement. But if there's no agreement within them, maybe you have to go the way President Macron is doing it, that every country is doing its own, like Germany is doing its own too, like the, the contention with, uh, uh, with Britain, with the Benin uh, Kingdom here. But there has to be an agreement, there has to be a collective front, a collective demand from Africa. And I'm not sure Africa itself has been able to even get the hearing of members of African Union. Uh, so the way forward is for that collective front to make demand so that uh, we, we can move forward from this. Thank you, and that's all we have time for, unfortunately, for this edition of Talk Africa. Again, a big thank you to our panel of experts for a lively, lively discussion. In Cairo, Bassam al shama an Egyptian archaeologist and a vocal activist on art repatriation. From Brussels, Bruno Verbrecht, Deputy Director of the Royal Museum for Central Africa. And in Lagos, we have Jaman Anikulapo, an artist, cultural communicator and advocate. Remember, you can be a part of this conversation online through Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And do join us again next week for more of Talk Africa. I am Liu Fei Fei, and until next time, goodbye.